Lewis Hine, a New York sociologist and photographer, documented the exploitative conditions of child laborers, including bicycle messengers. The use of bicycles for delivery began almost immediately after the pedal-driven velocipede was developed in the 1860s. By the late 19th century, bicycle messengers were employed by telegraph companies and drug stores working exhaustingly long hours. George Christopher, 14 years old, works for Postal Telegraph. He has been a child bicycle messenger for over three years in Nashville, Tennessee, in November 1910. Raymond Bikes, Western Union No. 23, Norfolk, Virginia. He was 14 years old and worked until after one in the morning every night. He often slept down at the Bay Line boat docks and his mother seemed more concerned about getting his pay envelope than anything else. Curtin Hines, a 14-year-old Western Union messenger, worked from 4 to 8 p.m. and had been with the company for six months. He also worked for a drugstore for one month in October 1913. Percy Neville, an 11-year-old messenger boy, was the sixth messenger for the Mackay Telegraph Company. He had been working as a messenger for various companies for four years, by November 1913. A 14 year old boy worked as a messenger for Western Union in Shreveport. He frequently visited the red light district in November 1913. 11-year-old Percy Neville worked as a messenger boy for the Mackay Telegraph Company and had been doing so for four years by November 1913. 13-year-old Howard Williams worked as a delivery boy for Shreveport, Louisiana Drug Company, putting in long hours from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. for three months. He frequented the red light every day and night, and mentioned that the company had trouble retaining other messenger boys due to the demanding workload. This was in November 1913. A 15-year-old delivery boy for Linder's Drugstore in Dallas, Texas, worked from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in October 1913. Percy Neville, in the heart of the Red Light District, had just come out of one of the houses with a message. He said gleefully, she gave me a 25-cent tip. This happened in November 1913. The postal telegraph boy in Danville, Virginia, refused to show me through the red light district that night, stating that the manager did not allow them to run such errands. This incident occurred in June 1911. I spotted Luther Wharton, a 12-year-old drugstore delivery boy, working until midnight at Summer's Drugstore. He goes to school during the day and works from 4 ush p.m. to midnight and only works half a day on Sundays. He earns $5 a week as of October 1913. Marion Davis, a 14-year-old messenger for Bellevue Messenger Service in Houston, Texas, in October 1913, had been working as a messenger for two years, despite not being old enough to work on the reservation. However, her boss didn't mind, and the police didn't stop her. Hodges Gallup, also known as Western Union Messenger No. 16 in Norfolk, Virginia, had been working for one month, he and other young boys worked until 10.30 p.m. in June 1911. Hodges Gallup, Western Union Messenger No. 16, from Norfolk, Virginia. He has been working for one month, along with several other very young boys, until 10.30 p.m. in June 1911. Earl Griffith and Eddie Tahuri were employed by the Dime Messenger Service. 
They often worked late into the night, sometimes until after midnight, and even on Christmas had a nine-year-old boy running errands for them, who made a lot of money from tips. They made about $7 a week, and occasionally more, and admitted to going into the red light district when a call sent them, although not very often. This was in April 1912. Fifteen-year-old Preston DaCosta worked as a messenger for Bellevue Messenger Service, delivering messages and drugs in the red light for six months. He had regular customers and knew all about the correspondence between a prostitute in jail and a pimp in the red light. He worked until 11 p.m. in San Antonio, Texas in October 1913. Ben Collins, a 13-year-old boy, had been working for the Mackay Telegraph Company in Oklahoma City for one month, earning $5 a week in March 1917. This is Isaac Boyette, the 12-year-old proprietor, manager, and messenger of the Club Messenger Service in Waco, Texas. Here he is in the heart of the Red Light District, delivering messages as he does several times a day. He knows the houses and some of the inmates and has been doing this for one year, working until 9.30 p.m. on Saturdays, making from $6 to $10 a week. Manley Creason, a messenger for the Mackay Telegraph Company, is 14 years old, although school records indicate he is 13. He claims to have been a messenger for years, earning $15 for two weeks' pay in Oklahoma City in March 1917. 11-year-old J.T. Marshall worked as a Western Union messenger for five months. He often went to the red light district and was acquainted with some of the girls. This took place in Houston, Texas in October of 1913. The postal messenger claimed to be 14 years old, but he looked younger. He was small and worked until 11 p.m. He mentioned going to the red light district sometimes for extra money. Location. Montgomery, Alabama, October 1913. Harvey Buchanan, Postal Telegraph Company messenger number 1908, was 14 years old and had been in service for one year. He worked from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and earned $4 weekly in May 1910. 